I, it, I mean, it's a very funny film, but it's also it's a romantic film. A, a, she is so beautiful. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. Yeah, it's like a sort of a callback to like you know the old school movie stars yeah. of. You know, she's yesterday. nearly as beautiful as Carrie Mulligan. Nearly. She's right on yeah, the verge. Yeah. On yeah, the they're, verge. They're, they're, they're yeah. Just, she scrubbed, she scrubbed I walked into a room with Amber Heard last week and I almost fell over. <laughs> She's, uh, I, didn't, I couldn't look her in the eye. She's sort of blinding. She really is beautiful. Yeah. Even I noticed. She's incredibly beautiful. <laughs> she, yeah. she is incredibly beautiful. She really is. Uh, now, it strikes me that in, in the beginning of your career, you must have had so much pressure to go down the kind of handsome, leading man route. And yeah. was, it, was it hard to kind of resist that? <laughs> You answer. <laughs> no, I think it's been tough on Ricky. <laughs> it has. He suffers. How does he pout? He does suffer. Do, do your pout. Come on, do it. What pout? What pout? Come on. No, I need more. The pout you stole off me. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I really love your band. <laughs> Thank you. I really do. I appreciate that. Jarvis Cocker, ladies and gentlemen. Jarvis <laughs> uh, Cocker from Blur. <laughs> More stars than there are in heaven. It's incredible. Because <laughs> uh, I think what's amazing about you is that you have turned by being a, a real kind of character actor into, well, like, you're the best character actor in the world. Well, you are. You Good Lord, man. Well, because most character actors, <laughs> most character actors, most character actors are kind of also appearing. You've turned being a character actor into what, a global superstar. No, thing. I think it's more like a, uh, some some form of schizophrenia that has just worked for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> because those characters they're so big, the Captain Jack, Jack Sparrows and Willy Wonka and Mad Hatter and things. Do you come to the set with those fully formed? Or do you work with the director, or do, how, how does it happen that you create those? Yeah, generally they're born out of whatever they're born out of, you know. I've, I've had, you know, characters born out of, uh, don't get excited, the sauna, you know, being in extreme... Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can feel them coming on, can't you? <laughs> don't pick on me. <laughs> the audience are always going to be on your side. <laughs> No, these characters that are born out of, you know, sort of strange, you know, extreme heat or whatever, you know, th these thoughts and stuff, and you bring it to set, and then there's what I enjoy, really, is this sort of um, extreme quiet at the end of the first take, you know. <laughs> you hear action, you go and do your bit, and then suddenly you hear, cut. <sighs> so does that give you pleasure when the studio executives are kind of like, oh, of my... Course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I think that's the only way you know you're doing the right thing. And so do they literally have a conversation with you? Are you doing that for the whole film? Or... <laughs> it generally starts with what is wrong with you. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's amazing. Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? But you come with, you know, you know the, the kind of... No, you're just swinging. You have, a, you have a, you know, a big stick and you start swinging it kind of thing. And you just hope that it'll be all right. He broke a window, no, sort of. <laughs> he threw oh, a did. lemon through a window. I did. I smashed did, I did. the window. I did. I, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Let me tell you, Johnny. Ever thinks he's shy, okay? Um, but he wasn't shy this day, and he's got, he's got a wicked sense of humour. If people knew what he was really like, his career would be over. He's got... <laughs> So, in one scene, um, I'm helping, uh, I'm sort of helping Warwick get shoved down the toilet, as you do, right? And I'm sort of bending his legs in, I'm going, it's all right, if, I said, if it breaks, we'll get another one in, right? And I'm pushing him down the toilet, and I'm laughing, and Warwick's laughing, and at one point, Warwick goes, look at Johnny! I turn round, and Johnny Depp is going, you don't mind if I masturbate while you're doing that? <laughs> And someone took a picture of the moment, but he'd stopped by then, so it's just... Oh, OK, I think we've got the, I think we've got the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you were laughing so much? Yeah, he just, he'd just been doing it then. Yeah, but I'd, I'd finished by then. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, uh, so you are in Life Too Short, the picture we saw there. Yeah. Uh, it starts on 10th of November, and you're in episode two. So, Ricky, is it fair to say this is more like extras than The Office? Um, it's sort of a cross between the two, really. It's a fake documentary, like The Office, but it's uh, at the backdrop of media, like extras. That's, but if um, The Office sort of reflected those quaint docu-soaps of the 90s where normal people were trying to be famous, like David Brent, you know, this is much more up to date, where it's sort of D-list celebrities living their life like an open wound to try and be on... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Warwick, the Warwick... Just say Warwick. it, like Peter Andre. Just say it. <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it. <laughs> like Peter Andre, I go won't. on. I won't diss anyone. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I suppose it's, um, he's, he's got a terrible um, accountant, so he's got a, uh, a tax bill. His career's on the slide, he's not getting the films anymore. He's going through a messy divorce, so he agrees to do this fly on the wall, let the cameras into his house 24-7 to try and get back on the top. And he's, he's manipulative, he runs an agency, but he steals all the best jobs for himself and he just lets out the other dwarves for, you know, <laughs> you know human bowling balls and stuff. <laughs> and Johnny um, um, is uh, playing himself and he's doing a new Tim Burton film, um, Rumpelstiltskin, and he's playing a, a dwarf. So he wants to get in the head of a little person. Oh, so you're playing <laughs> dwarf. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, honestly, it was an incredible day. It was the last day of shooting, and um, uh, it was it was amazing. And Warwick. the things he came up with, making Warwick do it. He made him do Michael Flatley. He came out of nowhere and just going. <laughs> you know, and made him dance. And he made Warwick dance for about eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a we've got a clip of Johnny and Warwick <laughs> and yourself and Stephen. In terms of controversy, Ricky, you're not shy. Uh, you, you do like... Well, I don't know if you like... Do you like getting into trouble? Do you like... I don't get into trouble. I'm, well, not, I'm a comedian. Fred West gets into trouble. <laughs> 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 There's paedophiles with careers. What have I ever done? <laughs> no, but even at the end... <laughs> even at the end of the Golden Globes, just in yeah. case you'd left anyone on offended, uh, how did you sign off? I just thanked everyone, and I said, and, of course, thanks to God for making me an atheist. <laughs> which, which you can say here, but in yeah. America, they take that stuff very seriously. Well, yeah, I think it's, it's sort of, um, I think it's about 10% atheist. I think here's about 45% atheist. But, um, yeah, they were offended by it. They thought it was... That's pretty... only because God lives in the Midwest, doesn't he? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got a place there. Yeah. <laughs> Was it the next day? Was it after the Golden Globes that you, someone sent you the picture of the church? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I think some, some reverend somewhere or some bishop um, did a sermon for me to save my soul because I'm, I'm going to hell, of course. <laughs> this is a picture of the thing. It's yeah. a gen that's, that's real. Oh, it's real. No, it's real, yeah. yeah. A yeah. sermon for Ricky Gervais. Mm. <laughs> and then was it the same day or the next day that someone said... That's in L.A. There's a difference. In New York, they named a sandwich after me. <laughs> <laughs> See it in the window there. A sandwich for Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hell, but there's cheese and ham. Yeah. <laughs> That's what different. You are a comedian, da, da. but uh, as actors, I don't know, do you need to be more careful about what you say and do? Because Johnny, I heard, cause, presumably because you're Johnny Depp, uh, like, I read a story about, was it because you were coming from Lima to Miami, I think, and you were stopped at customs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and if you hadn't been Johnny Depp, they probably wouldn't have stopped you, would they? Well, it's kind of an interesting route, anyway. Lima, Peru to Miami. <laughs> it does sound like a drug <laughs> rod. Uh... <laughs> They're already expecting things, and uh, <clears throat> I did have some things. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there was a kind of a soft bag, and, and uh, the customs guy said, would you mind opening this up? And I said, he said, he said, first, he said, what is in there? I said, uh, stuffed piranhas. <laughs> sorry. Stuffed piranhas and some vampire bats. <laughs> Unzipped. And then there just happened to be some sort of vitamin powder that I was taking at the time. Yes. Yeah, I mean, in all seriousness. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd still be in jail. <laughs> and and they, it, when I unzipped it, poof, you know. <laughs> and there were these piranhas and bats covered in white powder. <laughs> Never, never mind the cocaine, right? <laughs> Sorry, we were there. Um, what, why did you have piranhas and bats? Well, it was important to have them. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. I, I had to bring them home. Yeah. But the guy thought he'd found the mother load, you know. He must have been so excited. Oh, God, it was... Oh. Oh. After that. Two-hander. He didn't go through with it, just so you know. All right. No, so what did you, how did you say? Did I'm you still a virgin. Oh, I was a virgin until Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say, do you say, that's vitamin powder, don't worry about it, and he believed you? Is that, is that real? They he really do that? did not believe me, no. No, right. So no, what do no. they do? Get... Everybody came out with guns and things like that. And you wow. Put that. But did you put a knife in your, and go up the rigging? <laughs> to get away from you? <laughs> that's what I'd have done. <laughs> but didn't, you were trouble at customs there, didn't you? Oh, customs, I remember immigration in the States one time I was going in and I panicked because the guy was like, uh, so what, what do you do? And I goes, I'm, I'm a comedian. So he straight away goes, well, tell me a joke. And I just panicked. Because I was like, if this joke isn't funny, he's not going to believe me and I can't get in. So it was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. And I straight away go, uh, what do you call an American? Oh, no, that's gonna, not going to work. <laughs> uh, you, and I just, like, if I say something, there's like, terrorism in her aunt like that, it's going to... And I just, I just panicked. And I, uh, I came out with a joke that wasn't that funny. I goes, I goes uh, why do Morris dancers wear bells so the blind can be irritated by them as well? <laughs> 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 He doesn't know what a Morris dancer is. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he just he came back with what was basically the worst heckle I've ever had in my career, where he just went, I'm going to put actor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, before we go tonight, let's have a story or two in the red chair. So, uh, who's up first? Hello, sir. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Mohammed. OK, and what do you do, Mohammed? Uh, I'm, re I'm a student. A student of? Radiography. Radiography? Yeah. A proper job. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll well, when I was seven years old, I went on a holiday with my mother to Egypt. And um, during my time there, I saw a donkey that was fully erect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 okay, Mohammed, Mohammed, do, do you mean he was standing up? <laughs> So, what's the best? Tell us your best story. I saw a donkey with an erection. <laughs> okay, so, so you were shocked, Mohammed. I was shocked, so I put my mother and I was like, Mum, Mum, like. what's this thing hanging out? And then she said, it's a spare leg. <laughs> and then after that, I was like, what's it for? And then she replied, when donkeys are happy, they have five legs. And when they're sad, they only have four. <laughs> so, a week after, I went back to school and my teacher asked us to, to draw a picture of anything recent that would be interesting. I, 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 Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Hello. Hi. Uh, what, what's your name? Uh, my name's Brooke. Brooke. And what do you do? Um, I work in PR. Oh, yes. Very vague. <laughs> uh, off you go, Brooke, with your delightful tale. OK. Um, I actually have a story about one of your guests. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I was riding the tube home from work one day, and I saw someone who looked suspiciously like a celebrity that I happened to adore. And um, he was wearing a stocking cap and some sunglasses. And I noticed that he had a tattoo on his arm that said Jack. And I thought, oh my goodness. And I leaned over and I said, excuse me, are you who I think you are? And he looked up at me and he said, why, yes, I'm uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> Needless to say, it wasn't Brad Pitt. And um, I got a great photo with uh, Mr. Johnny Depp on the platform at Bank Station. Is that true? <laughs> no. Well, on the tube. Photo evidence is yeah, on the tube. Yeah. Oh, I think you true. were, Mr. Stapp, you were with a, a BBC journalist. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I, I think you might just have a picture with some man. <laughs> <laughs> or bizarrely, a picture with Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take a picture do now. now. Oh, do you want a picture now? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. run out here. Run out. Quick, quick, quick. Let's go find you. That's very nice of you. Run! Run, Brooke, run! Oh, oh. It's really nice to see you again. 
Hearts are breaking. Stand, toge stand together and we'll take a screen grab of you. There you go. And we'll get that to you. All right. Well done, Brooke. Very good. Well done, everyone. And if you guys are joining us on the show and have a go in the red chair, you can contact us via our website at this address. Uh, thank you so much to my guest tonight, uh, Snow Patrol. Yeah.